What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and welcome back to part number two of my shop build series. In case you missed part one, I covered all of the framing work in this shop, including covering all of these concrete walls with this two by four framing, as well as building out a partition wall and office space at the front of this space. And in part two, I'm gonna cover getting all of the electrical put in, hanging all the outlet boxes, running the wire, all that kind of thing, as well as adding all of this beautiful LED lighting and last installing this soundproofing insulation which hopefully as you can tell has made the sound in this space just so much better but there's a lot to cover so let's go ahead and get started with the video let's rewind a bit and i'll show you how we installed the lighting for the shop half of which actually happened prior to framing so for the shop lights i went with 12 of these 96 watt led fixtures from american green lights plus one additional 72 watt fixture back towards the back door also, the number of fixtures I ended up using wasn't a random guess, as one of the services American Greenlights offers for free to their customers is a custom lighting simulation, where you send them a layout of your shop and they recommend the number of lights you'll need, what wattage, as well as where those lights should be installed. So to install these fixtures on the concrete ceiling of the shop, Justin and I first got to work installing these 2x4 strips, which span the gaps between the ribs of the ceiling. And we installed these due to the fact that the lights weren't going to line up with the ribs when spaced as we needed them. And we used concrete anchors to install these strips and ran them at 3 feet from the wall on the left side of the shop and 4 feet on the right side, which was based on the types of tools that will be on each wall. And we also used a line laser to make sure the 2x4s were running a straight line rather than relying on measuring off of the wall. Next, we marked out the locations for each light to make sure they were spaced evenly. And first we used a laser measure to determine the distance from the partition wall to the back of the shop and then divided the space evenly for the lights. And the first light started about three feet from the partition wall and then there was roughly five feet between each fixture. And we first marked these locations on the floor of the shop, then used a line laser to transfer the marks to the strips on the ceiling. To prep the fixtures for insulation, we reamed out the knockouts in the fixtures just slightly with a step bit to accept these snap connectors, and then installed the connectors which just press in and are then locked into place. And these connectors were used because we used MC cable for the wiring for the lights, which meant we didn't need any additional EMT or conduit. Next we could hang the fixtures, which went really quickly since we already marked the locations. To run the wire to the fixtures, we first used this MC rotary wire cutter to strip back the metal housing from the cable, and we can then run the wire through the connector and snap the NC cable in place. And in this case, we actually hung the fixture after running the cable, but we ended up hanging the rest of the fixtures first as we found that easier. Also, just to be clear, we didn't wire any of the lights or do any of the actual wiring in the shop. We just ran the wire and let the electrician handle all of the actual wiring. And here's how the lights looked once they were hung and wired. And the wiring to the panel is temporary just to allow us to have some light in the space while we work on the build out. So fast forward to after framing and we could get the can light housings hung in the office. And I went with American Green Lights LED retrofit inserts for the can lights, but I picked up the housings themselves locally. And I know some of you were asking why we use such heavy duty wide joists over the office. And that was to provide enough space to add these can lights. Once again, we called on the line laser to help us lay out where to place the housings and the joists, and we made our marks based on those lines. The housings were a little bit finicky to install as they were kind of flimsy, but they just nailed directly into the joists. And the hanger bars are adjustable to accommodate any variances in joist spacing, and then the housings can be slid on the hanger bars to adjust the exact location of the cans between the joists. So the last bit of lighting was in the area above the photo wall and front door, and we just did this off camera as it was just more of the same process of hanging the fixtures. So with the lighting hung, we could move on to the wiring, and the first step was to get the boxes mounted on the walls. And we decided to place the outlets at 5 feet off the floor in the shop, which would put them above most tools, work tables, or even sheet goods laying against the wall. And we made a mark at 5 feet and then set up the line laser at that mark, and then we could easily line up the laser with the top of the boxes as we installed them. And these boxes just nail into place and they go up really quickly. For all the 120 volt outlets, we used two gang boxes, which will house four outlets. And for the 240 volt outlets, we used one gang boxes since they will all have single outlets. 
and the 120 volt outlets were spaced roughly six feet apart along the entire length of each shop wall, while the 240 volt outlets were placed a little bit more strategically based on the exact tool locations. Since the right wall of the shop was covered up with stuff, we decided to go ahead and wire the left side of the shop as well as the office next since the wiring for the office ran through that left wall anyway. So first we marked out locations for the holes for the wiring, again using the line laser. And this step was probably a little bit overkill, but having all the holes perfectly aligned made pulling the wire later extremely easy. So after marking the holes, we came back and drilled the holes using a one inch spade bit. And the hole size here will depend on how many wires you're planning to pull through each hole, but one inch ended up working well for up to about three or four pieces of 12-2 Romex. Also, we made sure the holes were more towards the back of the studs so that the screws we used to hang the plywood later wouldn't risk hitting the wires. Once the holes were drilled, we could start pulling wire, and we started with the 10-2 wire, which was used for the dedicated 30 amp circuits for my dust collector and new Powermatic 12 inch jointer, which will be arriving whenever this build out is finished, which I'm super excited about. And this process was much easier with two people as Justin could just unspool the wire as I pulled it through the holes, which kept it from getting all kinked up and twisted. And I would pull each run back to the panel, leaving about six feet of excess, and then we could cut the wire and wrap it up and over the outlet box. We also labeled each end of the wires we went to make sorting through the bird's nest of Romex at the breaker box later much easier. Once all the wire was pulled, we would go back and run the wire into the actual boxes. And to do this, we would bend back one or two of the trap doors in the box, depending on how many wires we had, and then we could pull the wire through. And the trap doors are pretty tight, so it can be a little bit finicky getting this thick Romex into the box, but it's incredibly secure once it's fed through. After pulling the wire into the boxes, we would go back and add staples to secure the Romex against the studs. And you need staples within about 8 inches of each box and 12 inches of each opening, at least in my area, and it's always better to add more than you need. Next, we worked on the office area, and the outlets in the office were placed about 16 inches off the floor so that they would be underneath any of the desks in the space. We also added another two gang box for outlets on the outside wall of the shop, so I can plug in my soft boxes for the photo wall, as well as a one gang box for a light switch to control the lights in the front photo area. Getting wire up to the office was the same process as before, drilling more holes than pulling more wire. And we only had two circuits in the office, one for the outlets and one for the lights, so there wasn't a ton of wire to pull. We did go ahead and pull a home run for the shop lights so that I could have a switch on the shop side of that partition wall, which will control both banks of shop lights independently. And you can see that we had to use a metal box for this light switch as we had to use MC cable for the lights. And again, we didn't actually wire the switch to the breaker yet, as we already had the one bank of lights directly wired to the panel so that we could have lights during the build-out. Back to the office, we finished up by running wire to the box for the light switch, as well as the can lights. And we also ran more wire off camera up to the exit sign at the front door, as well as to those lights in the photo wall area. So with the left side of the shop and the office done, we could move on to the right side of the shop, which first required getting more wire over to that side of the shop. And we needed two runs, one for a dedicated 30 amp 220 volt circuit, and the other for the rest of the 120 volt outlets on that side of the shop. To get the wire across to the panel, we ran more 2x4 strips to allow us to run the MC cable along the ceiling. After getting the wire over to the right side of the shop, we just repeated the process of hanging the boxes and running wire. And once again, we used metal boxes for the first box in each of these circuits since we were using MC cable. And since there were only two circuits on this side of the shop, this process went much more quickly. So with that, all of the wire was pulled, so my electrician could come in to make up all the boxes. And this included stripping back the Romex, connecting all of the ground wires for each circuit, as well as any other wires that needed to be connected, and then rolling up the wire and stuffing it back into the boxes. He also added fire caulk wherever we had wire running vertically through the blocking or top plates, which is a code requirement in this area. And this whole process has to be completed prior to the rough in inspection, which was the next step in the process, which I obviously didn't get any footage of. Once the inspection was done and passed, which was a big relief, this phase of the electrical was done since none of the outlets or breakers will be wired until after the walls are all up. So next it was time to add some insulation. 
Now, I wasn't adding insulation in this space to provide any R value since I was adding it to interior walls. Instead, I was adding insulation to control sound since I have neighboring tenants I don't want to anger with my noise. And there was also a ton of echo in the space, which is obviously really bad for video. So I went with a product called Rockwool Safe and Sound, which is marketed as a soundproofing insulation, but Rockwool also has a ton of other benefits, including being incredibly fire resistant due to the fact that it's made from natural stone and recycled materials. It's also water repellent and is completely resistant to mold and mildew. And I'll have a link to the exact insulation I used in the video description below if you want to learn more. So before installing the installation, Justin and I actually built and installed 10 of these really simple acoustic panels, which we made using leftover 2x4s, some landscape fabric, and more of the safe and sound insulation. And I'll have a full video on how we made and mounted these panels later in this series, so stay tuned for that. Due to time constraints, I ended up hiring a local insulation company to help install the rock wall, and they did an awesome job. They insulated the entire space in a little more than half a day, where it would have taken Justin and I at least multiple days to finish. That said, the process of installing Rockwell is extremely simple and is definitely an easy DIY project. To install it, you need to cut around any obstructions, such as outlet boxes or wiring, with a serrated knife, and then just stuff the insulation between the studs. And you can see that these guys ended up cutting the bats in half to go around the wiring, and then just came back with small strips to fill in those gaps. And you do definitely want to wear full safety gear when installing rock wool, as with many other insulation. And this includes a respirator and at least long sleeves and gloves, if not an entire suit like these guys had on. And this stuff is extremely itchy if you get it on your skin or breathe it in, so definitely be safe when installing it. I actually got a couple sound samples just using the shotgun mic on my camera. Typically use a lavalier mic, but that way you can kind of get a better picture of what it sounded like in the space before and after. So let's show you some of those clips. This is the sound in the room before adding any of the soundproofing insulation or any of these kind of acoustic panels that we're gonna be building. So I'm right at eight feet from the camera so you can hear how echoey it is. I've got a shotgun mic on the camera so even with that, uh, it would be really hard to get good clean audio in this space. So we'll fast forward to when everything's installed and we can see how much of a difference it made. All right, and here's what the room sounds like after installing all of this soundproofing insulation. Obviously it has made a huge Huge difference there's a little bit of a bathroom fan noise in the background but outside of that the echo in this space has been reduced just an incredible amount I've got my lavalier mic on but it's not actually what you're hearing right now so really incredible results there so as you can tell this soundproofing insulation has made just a huge difference in this space next week I am going to be covering putting up all of the plywood walls as well as some drywall in the front space so stay tuned for that and go ahead and get subscribed if you're not already and ring the little notification bell so you don't miss that video all right thanks again for watching everybody and until next time happy building